with that, I'd like to call upon Dr. Andrew Sal, uh, the Chief Medical Officer. Dr. Sal. Thank you, Dr. Graham. <laughs> Good afternoon and uh, welcome everyone. My name is Andrew Saul. I'm the Chief Medical Officer and proud to be a family physician and I have the best job in the world. I get to serve the team around you, uh, the most extraordinary healthcare team on the planet. The COVID uh, pandemic continues to smolder through our neighborhoods and cities and from the start this virus has been an equal opportunity troublemaker. It does not care your race, your ethnicity, it doesn't care who you are or what you do for a living. Uh, it is more than glad, however, to take advantage of your vaccine status. During the first year of the pandemic, we worked side by side with our community partners to control the spread of neighbor with neighborhood-based testing and programs to help those uh, quarantining at home. We have an amazing community health workers here. When the vaccines were finally available, our teams worked side by side with the Rhode Island Department of Health and federal programs to begin that enormous task of immunizing as many people as possible. And we all celebrated when the mass vaccine efforts got 500,000 Rhode Islanders vaccinated. Hooray, we're halfway. That's still not enough. And our teams recognized quickly that the pandemic response is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So from the beginning, we began addressing barriers to care because not everyone had a vehicle to go to the mass vaccination site. Not everyone had a cell phone or a computer to register online. And certainly, Many of our neighbors work two jobs and are unable to take time off from work to get in line, and many of our neighbors speak a language other than English. The extraordinary team around you has been providing vaccines to people in neighborhood clinics across Providence. Evening clinics, we got you covered. Spanish, Portuguese, Khmer, Creole, not a problem. We speak your language. Can't make it to the clinic? We're now working with dozens of community partners to bring the vaccine to your church, your social group, your corner store. We're ready for your vaccine. When you're ready, say the word, we're here for you. So why is this a marathon? Well, vaccine hesitancy is real. Read a little history if you want to understand why many African Americans and people of color are just a little bit skeptical of the healthcare system. Our teams meet the people where they are, both physically and spiritually. Questions are welcome. Glad to answer them. Let's talk about your concerns. But it turns out that even that is not enough. Our community has a problem and we need your help. Now like all good doctors, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. Let's start with the bad news. Human beings are social animals. Yes, we are. And social media makes it ever so easy to spread rumors and misinformation. And you'd be surprised at how much chaos a dozen meme trolls can create when they prey on the fears of the people. Well, there's this guy in Florida, and he got the vaccine, and he grew an alligator tail. <laughs> you know, wow, the bad news. Human beings are social animals, and boy, can we get played. But there's some good news. It turns out human beings are social animals. And that's not a flaw. That's what makes us unique. That's our strength, our blessing. That is part of the solution here today. Studies show that the most powerful tool we have to persuade people to do the right thing is speak with them. It's really quite simple. And here are three messages that work, and they're backed by science and spirit. No strings attached. Ready? Dad, I love you. This vaccine is important for your health. I got it. And I want you to get it so that you can see your grandkids graduate from high school. Not bad, huh? Right from the heart. Number two, hey, big sister, I know you've read some stuff online that were forwarded to you by the friend of a friend of a friend of a Russian spam bot. But uh, millions of people have now been immunized, and they're doing OK. I took the vaccine. So did my wife. We gave it to our teenage daughters. And you know what? They're still teenage daughters acting like teenage daughters. They're normal. They're out living their lives. And my favorite one, of course, listen, friend, you want to get back in the community and start living? Well, get the vaccine. Help get our total numbers up to the point where we can break the cycle of this vaccine. Because population health is a team sport, and we all need to do our part. So in the face of misinformation, our most potent tool is word of mouth. And we need to help counter those rumors. And we need your help to spread the word that vaccines are both safe
and effective. Prior to the vaccines, COVID killed a half million Americans who never had a chance to be immunized. And now, COVID has killed another 100,000 unvaccinated Americans who had a chance to be immunized. Even though they had the opportunity to be immunized, they didn't take it. So don't miss your opportunity and don't let your friends, your families, or your neighbors miss their opportunity. Pick up the phone and call someone you love and tell them that you care, that you believe in science, that you believe in community, and that community level problems need community level responses, and that you had the vaccine, and you know what? You're doing all right. So because word of mouth is powerful, and hearing positive messages from someone you trust is indeed the most effective motivation known. Esperanza es más fuerte que miedo. Vacunate. Hope is indeed stronger than fear. Go get yourself vaccinated. Thank you. It is my honor to introduce one of our extraordinary family physicians here, Dr. Cesar Mora Jaramillo. Buenas tardes. As healthcare professionals promoting community health, we have a duty to continue supporting evidence-based guidelines for vaccines that will help our patient community. Our patients live in zip codes that have been hardest hit by COVID and vaccination is very important step in addressing this inequity. PCAC as an organization supports and promotes this vaccination efforts in order to help our communities. Harmless virus containing COVID-19 genetic materials enter the body and the body creates a harmless COVID-19 protein that when in contact with the COVID-19 virus, the body will fight off the virus through an immune response. All vaccines are effective. The most powerful and important fact is that if you get vaccinated, you are protected. Not only yourself, but you also protecting the people around you your family members, and the most vulnerable. As a community, we must address myths about the COVID vaccine. The vaccine cannot give you COVID-19, and it will not alter your DNA. Vaccines are developed following all the safety and testing requirements of the other vaccines. They do not cause infertility either. There is not a vaccine microchip that tracks people or gathers information and people who have already gotten sick with COVID are still at risk of catching the virus again. As a frontline physician, I would like to emphasize that the cases we're seeing now are on the unvaccinated people. And it's our responsibility to help the most vulnerable by getting vaccinated. So, por favor, vaccine, vacúnese. Thank you. And it is also my honor to introduce the most extraordinary man, uh, pastor of the Bethel AME Church and president of the Ministers Alliance of Rhode Island, Pastor Howard Jenkins. Thank you indeed for this opportunity. We recognize and understand that mistruths and misinformation causes missteps. We also recognize there's an element also called mistrust. And in understanding that combination of misinformation, mistrust, we also understand there's a history, particularly in our African-American community. But I stand before you recognizing in our BIPOC community, black, indigenous people of color, there is a desire and a need and a requirement that we share the importance of taking the vaccination. As a COVID survivor, I recognize and understand what it takes to struggle your way through this virus. But I also understand and recognize those persons that walk in my shoes historically have that mistrust. And so it becomes extremely important to recognize and also understand that when we are able to communicate, we can actually have resolution in this pandemic predicament. And the resolution is allowing ourselves to be open and honest, as has been shared, in regards to the need to stop this particular virus. 
We cannot overemphasize its importance, but we cannot also overemphasize the devastation that is had across the state and across the country. As we look at the numbers of what we see, 48.8% oh, across this nation has not taken or have taken the vaccination. So that means that we have over 50% of the country and of this state that needs to understand its importance. This is not a sprint. This is not a marathon. This is a reality that we have to be intentional in communicating the importance of being able to suppress this virus and understanding that there is another element regarding this virus that is out there. There is faith in science. And as faith leaders, we truly believe the importance of partnerships. We truly believe the importance of opening up our churches, our community centers, allowing communities to take vaccinations and also to take the test. And so what I want us to really understand and recognize in the midst of the misinformation, in the midst of the misunderstanding, the important thing is, is not to take a misstep and miss taking the vaccination. There is an urgent cry. There is an urgent need. And as a faith leader and as a community leader, we have to be intentional in identifying the devastation that is happening and not potentially happening. We have come through most of what we're trying to deal with, but the numbers are beginning to increase again. The uptick is noticeable. And what we don't want to have is one of our family members that have drank the Kool-Aid in regards to the misinformation to succumb to this virus. So again, for those that are listening, and for those that recognize the significance of the virus and the impact that it's had on your family and family members, I urge you, I encourage you, I implore that you reconsider, reevaluate, and take this vaccination. Again, I thank everyone for this opportunity, but most importantly, I thank you that are going to take the vaccination. God bless.